Hello class, uh, today the topic of our discussion would be the methods and procedures to start up a business. So uh, in this topic we will be discussing about how an entrepreneur is basically going to start up with the process uh, that will lead into the uh, establishment of his or her business. As we know that for uh, establishing any kind of business, first of all uh, some of the things are to be required that are to be gathered up together for the establishment of a business. So, uh, all these are the things that are to be uh, done for establishing a business. First of all, these are the points, this is the uh, idea or the plan, the next are the feasibility studies, these are the uh, things that are included into the feasibility study. Next is to seek for the market relevance for the location or the uh, availability of the place. Next is uh, to plan the cost that is to be input. Next are the expert analysis or the expert reviews about the business plan. And the last comes the legal formalities. Then only we can say that now the business is actually in the physical existence. Before this, the business was actually uh, in the uh, initiation phase. The business was not running uh, legally. So first of all, uh, we will be discussing about the idea or the business plan. As we know that before going into any kind of uh, task, we first need to plan out the things. Planning out the things uh, basically means that we should have a basic idea that what our business is going to be about. How are we going to uh, perform our business? What is going to be the business structure? So it basically is the uh, initiation of the business, but not uh, physically, it is only the virtual existence. First of all, we need to plan out that what is the basic kind of uh, outcome, what is the basic product, what kind of service are we going to provide to our customers. In idea planning, we need to apply our uh, skills, our knowledges and all those things which are to be summed up for the uh, framing of the idea. Uh, some ideas are actually uh, capable of uh, being converted into the physical business and some are not. So we first need to analyze over to this point so that we can uh, say that the business idea or the business plan is basically the thing that can actually be converted into actual business. So first of all the idea or the planning is done. Next comes the feasibility study. Feasibility study or we can say that uh, it is the study which assures us that uh, the business that we are planning about is actually practical. It is uh, uh, appropriate and it is correct by all the means. So it is known as the possibility study or the feasibility study. In this kind of studies, we try to calculate the probability or the risk factors that we might encounter into the course of uh, entering into the business. These feasibility studies are done in these uh, following uh, uh, categories. The first says that the feasibility about the market. Market simply means that uh, what kind of customers we will be targeting upon, who will be the uh, people who uh, our target will be based upon that those uh, are the group of people who will become the consumers. Are the consumers present or not? Next thing, what kind of quality are we going to uh, provide to them? Either it is the product or it is the uh, service that we are providing to them, the quality has to be assured. Are we capable of uh, providing that quality? The raw material that is required, will it be available to us? Uh, if, the if the raw material is not available to us uh, throughout the year, how are we going to assure for the quality to our customers? Will our customers uh, depend on us for this uh, particular kind of product? So these all are market based things. Next thing is growth. Growth simply means that okay, once we have entered into the business, next thing is uh, we cannot uh, stand up to that particular point that uh, where we have established our business. The next thing required is to grow. Growing means to expand our business to uh, achieve more and more of, to reach more and more customers and to uh, provide more of the uh, customers with our uh, more uh, reliable products. Uh, the next required is the market should be capable of providing us growth. If uh, there are less chances of growth then simply means that today we can exist but, uh, but uh, there is less chances of growing into the near future. Next feasibility study about is technical uh, issues related study. Technical issues means simply that if there is a kind of, uh, if there is a production kind of industry then uh, there has to be certain technical issues like uh, how are we going to manage our power supplies, uh, what kind of uh, uh, input power can be used, how are we going to uh, train our uh, manpower for attaining them, uh, for utilizing them into the production industry. The next thing is uh, the processing. Processing simply means that how our uh, raw material is going to be uh, processed and converted into the uh, outcome that is the finished product. The third thing is about the transport. 
because all these things are combinedly uh, calculating into our production cost and larger is the production cost the more will be the uh, the higher will be the cost of the final product so ultimately all these technical issues are to be sorted out uh, so that we can stand the competition that is already prevailing, prevailing into the existing market uh, if, if an entrepreneur works upon all these things before entering into the business it will uh, ultimately uh, help him to uh, gather all these things in such a way, in such a manner that he from the uh, initiation of the business can work upon reduction of the cost so that uh, after getting the f uh, final and finished product the total cost of the product is reduced next comes the financial matters the feasibility study about uh, financial affairs is also very very essential why because once we are uh, dealing uh, we are, once we are dealing with the, the funds arrangement uh, if suppose an entrepreneur is not capable of uh, uh, gathering enough amounts of funds for establishment of the business then ultimately the whole of the idea is at stake why uh, it is simply because uh, if once an entrepreneur is not uh, having enough of money then he can simply not uh, be able to establish his or her industry the third thing in the uh, the last thing in the feasibility study is the society and the environment while conducting the feasibility study it is very very essential to take into account the type of society that is uh, in the nearby area as well as to look out uh, look out for the environment why because if uh, the process that we are using is liberating uh, very many kind of uh, pollutants into the atmosphere or they are uh, liberating any kind of hazardous material into the neighboring environment then the society ultimately will be affected we have a large uh, number of uh, examples with us uh, we state that uh, the industries uh, were not able to survive just because they were liberating certain uh, kinds of effluents or uh, pollutants that were deteriorating the society or the nearby environment. So the people uh, were against such kind of industries and ultimately due to legal actions uh, such kind of industries were to be uh, shut off. So we will have to uh, keep in uh, to account the religious as well as the uh, social or the pollution or the hazardous such kind of social and environmental factors are also to be taken into account. All those things are combinedly uh, called to be the feasibility study. This feasibility study will be summarized as the summary report and this summary report will actually help us to calculate the uh, possibility or the risk factors or the uh, uh, probability that uh, either the business is going to exist or it is uh, not able to exist. The third comes the market relevance. Market relevance simply means that uh, the targeted people which we are trying to uh, lucrate for our product are the people are those kind of people available into this particular market or not uh, simply saying that if we are targeting upon the people who are let's say we are targeting certain age group of children so that particular children if uh, those kind of children are uh, very less in quantity into that particular area then actually our product will not be able to survive more why because the market is actually not relevant if uh, we are targeting uh, high class people and if we are uh, going for uh, rural areas then we will not be having uh, more people of that particular group. So the market relevance is also very very important. The next point is also somewhat relevant to it this is the location or the place availability. What is uh, meant by the location or the place availability it is uh, simply connected to the last point that also says that location also matters a lot. Uh, taking another example if we are uh, uh, getting into the business of gems or jewelry then the market to be approached is the high class market and uh, if we are directly going to uh, initiate a kind of business that is like somewhat grocery or supermarket or things like that then it uh, it can be uh, set it up at in uh, the population at any place uh, where the population density is higher so uh, depending on the to the type of business we also need to uh, select the location as well as the place availability the next point is the input or the cost planning what is meant by input and uh, cost planning uh, the next comes the input or the cost planning the input or cost planning simply means that uh, whatever amount of input that we are having into our hand it has to be uh, input uh, efficiently why efficiently just because uh, if we are spending lot of input amount into the things like the infrastructure or uh, in less uh, necessary requirements then it would simply lead to uh, then it would simply end up into the less of amount that is to be kept and as we know that uh, there are two kinds of uh, things that are to be kept is uh, 
uh, we have to take out expenses as well as the backup amount. So, we should always focus on both the things and the planning uh, related to the funds has to be made appropriately. So, uh, that is why we are saying that the import cost planning has to be done efficiently. We cannot uh, spare the amount, we cannot spend the amount too thin and neither we can uh, make out the expenses uh, without thinking about the uh, backups that uh, might be required in the near future. So, next uh, the things required are uh, the expert analysis. After the whole of this process has been done, we have uh, compiled up all the data. Then one more essential step that is not uh, in usual practices as seen uh, in the uh, uh, scenario that uh, the people are uh, going through nowadays uh, is that they do not uh, go to experts to take their comments. But it is a good practice. Uh, although we are spending a certain amount of uh, money for taking their expert opinion, but is it is actually very very vital for the business. Why? Because these uh, uh, experts are actually capable of uh, telling us that is this business model capable of working? Is it uh, going to exist into the market? Or is the market location that we have uh, selected, is it uh, of our use or it is not of our use? So, here the expert analysis is, uh, is very much required. These experts are basically the uh, people who keep on analyzing the market, who keep on analyzing the funds, uh, fund system that is to be spended over to uh, different kind of things and they ultimately are capable of uh, analyzing the whole of our business plan and they will tell us that okay, this is the step uh, which you need to uh, uh, emphasize more upon or this is the step that is uh, that will lead, you, lead to uh, profit or the loss into your business. So, an expert opinion is also very very much essential. The last factor is once all these things are uh, done and uh, all these things have to be checked, then the last thing comes is to be take the all the legal strategies that are very very much essential. So, the first thing is to get registered and to get the certification. Registration has a lot of things like we have to register our uh, organization, we have to get a proper taxation ID, we have to get a proper uh, accounting uh, system, we have to register all those things and we also need to get very many kind of certifications like for drug uh, industry certain kind of certificates are required for food sector certain other kind of uh, certifications are required. So, according to the industry very many kind of certification as well as registrations are to be required. Next comes the taxation system, uh, so very many kind of uh, central taxes and the state taxes are also uh, applied onto the industry. So, all these tax tax taxation systems are also to be taken into consideration. They We have to file our registration into all such kind of taxations, we have to get ourselves registered and properly time to time we have to pay the taxes. Next thing is other legal structures, uh, there are very many kinds of uh, documentation that is to be done and we have to follow all those things before uh, starting up our business. Otherwise, our, uh, the business uh, practice that we are go uh, governing will be considered as illegal and by the uh, legal structure, uh, our business if considered illegal, then it could be simply shut it off. So, that is all about uh, that is to be required. Uh, for uh, taking up this uh, protocol so that uh, we can start up with a business. That is all. Thank you.